I'm on my first viewer, I am. What's up? We're on. We're good. I think we got the right angle here. What's up, Lolo? Here is Kylie. Shifty, what's up, Clay? Astro Zombies, Mad Dream, Dark Knight CS, what's up? Afrozilla, Juan, the man of the hour. Here we have it, the last one. Here it is. The last uh, part of Ice from the L Black Bat himself. So, just like Clay, <laughs> I found Juan in, a, in accord with Clay. I think I found them kind of at the same time, around the same time. I also enjoyed Juan's uh, hard enamel pins. His first pin I ever got from him was his um, Nightmare Before Christmas Sally's The Lamp Leg. Love that pin. Um, that was a great. That's a. That was a great pin. Happy to have that pin in my collection. Pin Studio. BB. Pencil Dick. Wow. Look at this. It's like we're giving away pins or something. <laughs> Hilarious. Queen pin. Darth Zacharias. Punch Chewy. What's up? Ah, everybody. I love it. Stream Squad. Yep. Bunsen B. Download. <laughs> oh, you're funny, dude. 910, 910. <clears throat> so, I had a good day today, you guys. Today was a good day. I hope you had a good day. I hope you had a good Friday, if it matters to you. If it's Friday, if it matters to this Friday. It doesn't really matter this Friday for me. Kind of, but not really. I got no... This is just the... This is just the, um... Playlist that's on Spotify, PPLS. Look it up. I stopped advertising it because nobody followed it. Zero followers in like three weeks. So I'm gonna stop advertising it. So there we go. Yeah. So I hope everybody got through this Friday and had a good week. Looking forward to the weekend. We're closing out the summer here. August, first weekend in August. I didn't get any pins today. Bummer. But that's okay. So, it's funny because my day started weird. Like, okay, so usually, like, I don't mean to get into my day, but the first thing is take care of the dogs, take care of whatever I need to take care of. And during that, I check my email, nothing really usually. I deal with whatever necessary the day before, honestly. And then I go into everything else. Like, eventually, I'll get around to checking Instagram and whatever because I don't leave notifications on. I get no notifications. So I just whenever I decide to open it is when I open it and that's what I do and I do it and then I get off of it And that's it. Sometimes I hang around and browse for a minute and I'll, I see some shit and I do some shit But I don't really linger as as often as I used to linger way back when I'd get my shit done and I go so anyway today I was in the midst of ready to buy or get whatever is time to get because today there were some things being released and um, I just had a pen I wanted to buy and it ended up being a little more than I want I, I was expecting it to be and then I felt that it was a little more than it should be and I left a comment as so that I didn't think was so fierce or uh, objectionable like I don't think that I said anything off color in my first way other than I admired the piece and that I was um, stoked for the makers first release and disappointed that the price was so high in it. That's all. And I don't feel that that's too much of a uh, 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 negative or or um, un unconstructive comment, quite frankly. And so on the side, after that, I directly messaged that maker and I said what I said if you follow my story today. I share this because I feel like it is a dialogue that I've been trying to have for a long time since I started this. And before that I was having just in comments and posts and all by myself kind of thinking, well I can't be the only one that thinks these things and wonders and has to imagine what the hell is going on here. Like why are some pins so fucking expensive or hard to get? Like they get released at a certain time all the time and you log on at that time and they're not there. Because they were bought in the two seconds it took for that clock to change and you to log all your info in. 
It's kind of crazy. So, anyway, I think I cordially said, hey, I really love your design. I'm going to be reviewing Batman pins tonight for my man Juan and um, giving away a pin and talking about all this price points and all that. I'd love to have you for a discussion. And I got laid into. I've been chewed out before, as Lieutenant Aldo Rain would say, and I can take a chew out. And I can do a good, I can give a good chew out. So we got into a chew out. <laughs> and I stopped. I stopped. I stopped. But then I kept sharing what was happening. And anyway, it kind of, I guess, got petty. It's, I, I was called petty by somebody who I really admire and love. But that's okay, because everybody's entitled to their opinion. And there's no love lost between me and that person, I hope, because I respect their opinion is I like to think I'm being spiteful because after all of this is said and done I feel like I'm building a conversation I hope he generates more sales I hope he sells out of this pin but I just want to go into the beginning of this so at some point during this show I'm gonna ask you guys a Batman question and I know we're waiting for it but I'm gonna make you build and wait for it yeah I guess I guess it mad dream says he got real petty well I like to think that his crowd got real petty I'll get into that it was a choice of words I guess he was disappointed in my choice of words and I was very disappointed in his choice of words I'm frankly disappointed in, in a maker not allowing his people to back him up in the comments most of you guys let your people do your talking when it's something like that um, especially if it's like a, a disappointing like comment about shipping or or something really like I've said this to other makers before and we've had personal dialogues about it on the side before and after it and I don't feel any bit like any bit of regret for doing it in a public eye at all but like the thing about what was said about me I don't know if anybody read any of the other things that I just, as I I'm not in he said, she said bullshit, but I mean, I hope he gets sales, but he it questioned like me having a better job, like I need to get a better job because I can't afford his pin. And it's not about that. I mean, it was, and then it's gotten into like only for real fans. Like I'm not a real Batman fan. Like I don't like Batman. Like if I like Batman, I would buy his pin that's overpriced and, and, and inflated for his first pin. Um, with no real detail on where's the back, I didn't get the backing card, I didn't know if it's stamped or not, I just didn't know. Come to find out in the background that, um, like, through other channels and, like, we're trying to help. This is a community, so we're trying to help. Like, when someone disagrees on the price, oh, well, look who just fell. The Fallen. Um, are they, are, am I being negative? And I'm not being, it's underappreciated. Sure, I think... Where I am appreciated is right here, and that's what I'm doing this for. And for what I've been trying to give and, like, transfer in terms of maker to collector and collector to maker, the expectation of back and forth exchange and why you're doing what you're doing. Sure, you're making this pin because you wanted this pin, but you got 99 more of them to sell, or maybe in some instances 199 more to sell and to get rid of, more or less. And if you want other people to have this and think that it's for the people, don't expect to turn a profit on it, especially when it's your first pin. Maybe to make another pin, yes, I understand that, but... You know, like, I mean, I suggested it be $12. I didn't suggest he slash the price in half and make it, you know, $7 or $8, even though I think it is an $8 pen. I think all soft enamel pens should be $8. I don't care how fucking big it is. Because I know it can't be more than, like, four, $4 to make that pen. So if you're charging me $8 for a $4 pen, you're doubling your... That's great. That's great. To inflate it 700% is ridiculous and asinine and it's, it is extortion and I'll use my vocabulary that I earned with my degree. Thank you. So those words that I use, they might hurt because they're true and it might sound like vitriol, but it's just my brutal honesty, man. That's it. Like, there's no iota of understanding here. Um, I mean, <laughs> you compare it to, to like the Led Zeppelin doesn't write songs for everybody okay I get that the Bee Gees did no the Beatles wrote songs for everybody dude that's what the pink community is like it's like the Beatles and you reference other makers like Crime Alley Pins which I have here this two set from Batman and Penguin 
was thirty dollars. Yes, it was thirty dollars. I'll throw it out there. It was a thirty dollar pin set. I feel it's totally worth this pin set. A, it's limited. Look at the packaging on these things. I've reviewed them. They're ridiculous. The time and effort put into this is shown. I mean, like the value of these is going to skyrocket. They're both interactive and movable, and there's a whole bunch of embellishment on each of them in a way that I can't even communicate in a conversation over Instagram. You you hurt the integrity of the pin community when you overprice a pin that you think is like something you need to overprice because you got ripped off by your maker, by your manufacturer. I know that for a fact from someone close to me who makes pins and is making them for a little while that this pin should have only costed about a buck seventy-seven a pin for two hundred if you're buying them in bulk, and that's like a newbie price. So I just feel like you know, no look, look, look. I was trying to let bygones be bygones, but it kept going, and now here, here's where it is. Here's where it is. Another patches and pins thing. I'm not trying to bring the negativity. I'm trying to bring the honesty. I'm trying to bring the transparency. Is what I'm trying to bring. Transparency on why you feel that you should charge two dollars less than this pin for a, for the first pin you've ever made that has no detail about what's going on with it, other than its size and its rubber backing, and this is it. I don't have this pen, but I will have this pen soon. And then we're gonna have another conversation, hopefully about it, that's more constructive, that we can build the conversation and we can help this person because we want everyone who wants to make pens succeed. Because through that only will the whole pen community succeed. It takes a village, you guys. So I would love to turn this frown upside down for this maker. And if you want to help me, and you're, there are already those that are, have, have in, I've, ha, I didn't enlist your, their help, but they went at it anyway and tried to help him. So I'm glad. So let's do it. I did. I bought his fucking pen anyway, just to spite him, just to spite all of this. Cause I, it's not about, it's about the, it's about the, the principle and the integrity of what we're doing. I can't just say it so weirdly. If you find that like off-putting, then you're in the wrong place. That's what it is. So anyway, this is the question right here. Do y'all want to look at any Batman pins or any Batman pins anybody wants to see? Yeah, my totally, I overdrafted. <laughs> Which is funny because I've overdrafted so many times and so many other things. <laughs> but not this one. <laughs> so, if anybody wants to see any... Yeah, the manufacturer charged them $6 a pen. Can you show us your shirt more clearly? Okay. <laughs> it's my um <laughs> it's my pin up jasmine <laughs> i like to wear this to disneyland to fuck with the parents and the kids the dads and the, and the little kids it's great um but i, th I was also going to suggest out there if this is caught by anybody on that person's camp or within their realm Bespoke Pin Studio by John D. Wiltshire. The Pin Studio has opened up a all-inclusive, like, they're gonna help you from the ground up. If you've never made a pin, don't worry, they got your back. So if you're into, want to, trying to, interested, whatever, like I am, fascinated, John D. Wiltshire at the Pin Studio is your man to talk to. So go check that out. Later, Limelight. Much love to Mocha. Check out Limelight Designs for her $5 mocha blind bag pin sale. Mystery. Mystery pin sale. So I have a few wand pins. I got a couple on this board right here. I got the... Um, this is a heavy ass board, you guys. This board is heavy. Oh, there goes the pen studio. I got the bang bang, bang here, and the Harley. Those are both Juan, right there.
Got his black stamp here on the first edition Two Face and Harv We Trust. A lot of Duncan. He's got farts here. My man, the Pin Wizard, Sumo, Disalexic, Sumo, Clay, Moving Silence. Uh, mm, Mo pins. There's the infamous right here. Here it is. What a better time to ask the question then. How about we do it right now? Everybody ready? And what year did Mr. Freeze make his debut appearance? And what was his original name? In what year did Mr. Freeze make his debut appearance? In the Batman comic books, and what was his original name? Here we go. Okay. All right, Dark Knight CS, I believe you are the winner. Dark Knight CS, I think you got the win there. Dark Knight CS has been all about it. Dark Knight CS, you are the winner. 1959 is the correct answer. And his name was originally Mr. Zero. Mr. Zero. Congratulations. You have won the final Heart of Ice. Good job. Good job. Hey, thanks everybody for playing. You guys are all getting this answer right. That's great. You did, you did a good job studying, everybody. I'm proud of you. You passed the pin pirate test. He did. He did the name before anybody else did in my, in my feed. That's why I'm looking at my phone right now. 1959, Mr. Zero. And then Lumbervike said 59. And then Zambufia Bufa said 59, Mr. Zero. Then Madrine said 1974, which was wrong, but that's okay. Then Lolo Trev was me zero, 1959. I'd give that to you, Lolo, if you were the first one. Yeah, that was quick, Juan. I did it. I did it just like that. I did it just like that, bro. There it is, the answer and the question. So, just DM me. We'll get into that later. Sam <laughs> Poofa, you're, you're funny. I'm sorry, you did not win. But thank you for playing. Check back again, we're gonna have many more things like this, all right? Many more things like this. But let's get back into more wand pins. So I also got the dummy over here that moves. I've featured that. Then his new release, the Scarecrow, which glows in the dark. And the Poison Ivy, which has a scent, a fragrance to it. Fantastic pin. Not a lot of Poison Ivy pins out there. Got all my shy human effects vehicles over here, my PB animated series. Cool shit club. Ever good. All the greats, all the greats here. All the greats up in this. Duncan, shy good. Human effects, um, balloons, love them. Don't forget the belt moves off of this. It's totally interchangeable. That's two molds. Two molds. Always more expensive, two molds. Yes. It's got a fragrance to it. Barely still, barely. Barely. Still has a still has a scent to it. Tom's Lair. Do I supply? <laughs> I love the do I supplies up in this. Two uh 
This is the original soft enamel edition, and this is the hard that Graveyard Goods did. I almost got the same number of each. How about that? BB. BB Create in the house. Everybody, all the greats. Everybody's hit a little Batman. Everybody's hit a little Batman, but who can't? We all love Batman. I mean, I have a fucking clay, clay face pin. What the fuck? You're telling me I don't love Batman? I got a motherfucking clay face fin, pin. Get out of here. <laughs> Mega Batman pin, Steez. Mega Batman pin, Midnight. <laughs> Thanks for coming, you guys. I appreciate you guys coming. Um, I'm going to review a couple pins real quick. That So, I've had some Batman pins I've been sitting on for a long time. I've been sitting on some of these Batman pins right here for a very long time. But it's because I had the originally got the bat signal, but there was a, a bit of a blemish in it. There was a flaw in the bat signal. Oops. So um, I had to send it back, and I just got around to doing that not too long ago. So um, it's going to be here whenever it's here. So we'll just do the bat signal separately. I'm sorry. But um, I got the Shy Human da Farts by Dallas team up here with the Heart Enamel Keaton, and I had the bat signal, but don't have it anymore. I didn't want to review a flawed pen. And when I knew it was, and I knew the maker, who was awesome, both uh, Shy and Dallas were great. Um, took care of me, which was fantastic. Beast Rack, what up? My man. Pinpole, what up? Gotham Rhodes design, okay. I know, it's probably so many ideas that once you start, it's just it's so hard to stop. Beast Rec is a great example. Like, he opened a can of worms when he did the Pac-Man, now he's all over the arcade games and it's ridiculous. It's like, oh my god, how do you stop? I know, it's great. <laughs> uh, Um, so I also got the Duncan uh, Wonderful Toy and the Shy Human Updated Keaton Heart Enamel here, which is, all three of these are just so beautiful. Uh, heart Enamel all around on all three of them. And I, you know, I'll stress again my love for Heart Enamel in this way. It takes a good pen and turns it into a great pen. That's it, because look, all my soft enamel pens are good. I love them. I would wear them. I've worn them. I will wear them again. They're wearable and collectible and tradable and sellable. But this pin, you wear this pin, like it's just like it's just wow. It's it's great. It is like I said the other night, uh, a fashion accessory. It turns into jewelry at this point. Look at this thing. Look at how it shines. Twinkle and glistens. You can't even really... But these are all limited. So... But this is great. I mean, he really fully does it, redesigned it, and it's fantastic. It looks great. Look at all the de attention to detail in there, and you can see how it's reflective. You know? Yeah, it's got a little scuff vision, but this kind of pen is going to get it because it doesn't have any kind of protective epoxy on it or anything, you know? As it is, but my other one just had a ding in it, so that's different. And then this, one of those... Clay Graham type uh, hook shot type pins from Duncan. All three of these are silver nickel or dark nickel, dark nickel, dark, dark, yep, dark. 
Actually, this is just metal. Hard enamel on metal with silver. So yeah, silver metal. Yep. And a gold hook shot though. Gold metal hook shot. Fantastic. Yeah, when it's done right, it's just great. These three are all done right. This is, I mean, what a fantastic trio of Batman pins to add to the board here. What is sure to be an amazing meeting of many minds, personalities, and types, the craziness that will unfold at the Pints and Pins event going down at Angel City Brewery in downtown Los Angeles on September the 10th. I tell you guys what, it's gonna be something not to be missed and I'm glad I'm not gonna miss it. I hope, I know, I hope I'm still alive. <laughs> Yeah, that spawn that Duncan did originally was one of the first ones I got. Mo. I accidentally washed washed my Jabba Jabba the Cone pen today. It survived beautifully. I, I looked at it, I was like, the pen wizard would be proud of you. <laughs> uh, um, what do we have coming? So next week it's gonna be sporadic. Maybe something on Thursday with Bunsen Bean, perhaps. Yet to be confirmed, but I can tease it because I think it's gonna be confirmed. Oh, I have one last thing to show you about the man, Juan. Y'all want to see a, a sneak peek at Juan's next two Batman pins? Hang on. Here we go. Mad love. And meow. Soft enamel with epoxy and glitter. You know I'm in. And then we just got soft, soft enamel with epoxy here on Harley. But look forward to both of these being in existence. First look right here. Look at this. I love this in the left and the right. Splitting up the, it's great. It's well, very well done. It's gonna be beautiful. I'm really excited for this. It's gonna go great with my other cat woman. I don't have many. This one's cool too. And with the Harley. Full bodied Harley, I like it. With the tam with the uh, sledgehammer and everything. Yes, there can only be Juan. There can only be Juan Garcia. <laughs> The L back black by himself. I've been so privileged to have both of these makers uh, ask me to reveal, review, give away some of their pins here um, over the last two days. So I want to thank Juan and Clay both for allowing me to be your portal and your vessel to share your pins with these wonderful people and my followers and otherwise people that hear about it and see it and just to um, let me be a vessel for you so I will continue to do that for my pin community that's what this is all about as I said again at the top of the stream I hopefully we can build this dialogue I wanted to do this stream before I went any further um, just because I felt this was something I really needed to make a note of because it's important to talk about why you're paying so much for pins when you know you shouldn't be. Especially if you're a maker, we can help you find a better way to make your pins. We can. So, even if you, D you DM me and I don't know, I can get you to somebody who will. Alright? So, that's what it is. Alright? That's all I can say. Love you guys both. I'll see everybody at YesterCon on Sunday. I'll be there. Look for me in my... I don't know what hat I'm going to wear yet, but I'm going to wear a hat. So, we'll see y'all there. Alright. Oh, the new pins are now live for pre-order on Juan's site. That's amazing. Thank you, guys. Um, 
maybe I'll stream a little bit from Yestercon. We'll see. Maybe I'll have a nice little intimate sit down if they have a minute with Juan and Clay and we'll do a wrap up of what we did here. Who knows? We'll see. Peace, love, and yard. See you in the comments. <laughs>